Hey, this is Chris Plush from CG Masters, and this is a free lecture from our upcoming course, The Blender Encyclopedia. This is an all-in-one type course with more than 50 hours of training for the latest version of Blender, including step-by-step -step projects like this one on creating a fully procedural carbon fiber shader. So check the description for more info on the course, and I hope you like this tutorial. In this step-by-step -step project, we're gonna build a carbon fiber shader. This consists of a metallic weave pattern and a brushed metal look to it. And this tutorial will be step-by-step, but is probably more on the advanced side, so it would help if you had at least basic experience with nodes before attempting this. And like with many textures, there's likely other methods of creating this one, but I haven't seen any that use the correct weave pattern or any that didn't just use image textures. So I wanted to make one procedurally so we could customize it more. This shader will be best applied to anything UV unwrapped. So for this tutorial, you can use any model that's unwrapped, including any of the default mesh objects here, like the monkey head or plane, and to keep things simple, what I'm gonna do is use a plane while we're building this. So let me press A to select everything, press X to delete it, and then I'll press Shift and A, and I'll add in a mesh plane. Now let's add in a material for this. So let's go over to the material properties here. I'll click on new, and we'll rename this to carbon fiber. Now let's split the window by clicking on the top right corner there and dragging left. And then we'll go into the header menu here and we'll switch this to the shader editor. And let me press the N key to get rid of the right side toolbar and zoom in on what we've got so far. Now we don't need to do much with the principled node for now, except we'll crank the metallic value up to one. Now our main goal is to create this weave pattern here. So this is our aim. We have a clear weave pattern and each fiber is brighter in the center and darker on the ends. So we can use this as height information for a normal map. Now you can see we've got some fibers going sideways and some going up and down. And note how all fibers going in the same direction follow a sort of zigzag pattern. So that's our first step. We'll make a black and white zigzag mask to use to mix both directions of fibers together. And notice how the pattern goes four rows up before starting over. We'll keep that in mind. All right, now for this, we'll start off with checker textures. So let me pan that over there and I'll press shift and A. And from the texture menu, we'll add in a checker texture. And with that selected, let me press control and T and it gives us a mapping and texture coordinate node. Now make sure to enable Node Wrangler in your add-ons in order for hotkeys like that to work. We go over Node Wrangler earlier in this section. All right, so now let's go over to the 3D view, press Z and go into Material Preview. And let's get rid of these grid lines. They're intersecting the plane and kind of annoying me. So I'm gonna go up into the viewport overlays here and I'll check off floor and the axes there. That's better. All right, so now let's get a preview of our checker pattern by holding Control, Shift, and left-clicking on the checker texture. And now let's change the scale here to 10 so that we can see more checkers. And that's actually important too because we do some calculations based on scale later, so you should definitely set the scale to 10 as well. Now let me press NumPad 7 for top view. Now our goal is to take a checker texture like this, and we want to move each row sideways a little bit so that the squares overlap. That'll give us the zigzag pattern in the end. And in order to do that, we'll need four different offset values, because like I mentioned, there are four unique rows in the weave pattern before the pattern starts over. So we need to move each one of those four rows a different amount so that there's a perfect overlap. So we'll start by creating something that gives us four rows that have four different values. So let's change the X scale on the mapping node here to zero. And that's gonna stretch those checkers out infinitely on the X axis so that they just appear to be straight horizontal bands. And let's change color number two here to black. And we'll change color number one. We'll just crank that up so that it's a pure white. It was a little bit dim. All right, so now we essentially have two different rows with two different values, but we need four. So what we'll do is use this here as a mask and we'll fit other checker bands inside. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So let me select the checker texture. I'll press Shift and D and we'll duplicate this twice. And let's connect the mapping node to each vector socket of each of those checker textures. Now in each checker band right here, we wanna fit two other bands. So we need bands that are half the size. So what we're gonna do is take these two checker textures and we're gonna double the scale value, which will make them half the size. So I'll type in 20 there and 20 for this one as well. You can see we're previewing this checker texture still. And when we change that to 20, those bands now become half the size. So these two smaller bands here fit in one of the larger bands of the mask that we're gonna use. So that's perfect. So we have two checker textures here, each with two different colors, which means we have four bands available to us between the two nodes. So let's make them all different values. And we're gonna to need to do that in perfect quarter increments too, since there's four bands. So we'll start off at the top here 
and we'll make sure that color is a perfect white or perfect value of one. Then the next color down, we'll bring that down a quarter. So I'll click and drag over all the RGB channels and type in 0.75. Then we'll go down to this one and we'll click and drag over RGB and type in 0.5. And then finally for the last color, we'll type in 0.25. Now we can mix these two together using our original mask right here. So let me zoom out a bit, select them and move them over to give us more space to work with. And let's combine these together. So I'll hold control, shift, and right click and drag between them and it'll connect them using a mix note. And let's mix these two together using the color from this checker texture as the mixing factor. And now I'll hold control, shift, and left click on that for a preview, and there we go. So what's happening is we're taking this checker texture right here and using it as a mask, where the white areas are gonna show the bottom checker texture and the black areas are gonna show the top one. So that in the end is going to show us four different bands. So, so far, so good. So now that we have these four different bands, we can use those values as an offset for another checker texture, and that's gonna give us the zigzag pattern. Now, before we move on, let me switch the texture coordinates here to UV. This texture is definitely the kind that's gonna work better with UV coordinates. So let me connect that to the mapping node there, and now let's move on. So we're gonna need some extra space in here. So let me drag this window over a little bit, and I'll drag this over a little. And let me zoom out. I'll select all those nodes and move them over. And now let's select this middle checker texture here. I'll press Shift and D to duplicate it and drag it over there just in the middle of nowhere. Now for this, let's make the bottom color black. And we're going to leave the scale at 20 as well to make sure it aligns with the checker bands perfectly. So let's preview this. I'll hold Control, Shift, and left click on it. Now in order to offset these checkers, we'll need to use a mapping node. So let me press Shift and A. And from the input menu here, Nope, vector menu, yep, there it is. Okay, from the vector menu, add in a mapping node. And we'll connect the vector output to the vector input there. And it turns black now because we need some kind of texture coordinates for this. And we're gonna use UV texture coordinates as well. So let me zoom out and where is it? So the texture coordinate node is over here. So I'll click on the UV output there, drag it all the way over to the vector input of the mapping node. All right. And let's also change the Y scale value to zero so that we start off with vertical bands here. And now we can just offset each row and get our zigzag pattern. And that's where the mapping node comes into play. Look what happens when I hold shift, click on location there, and then drag it. You can see it offsets the texture, but it's just using one value to offset things resulting in the entire texture offsetting. That's where those four bands with the four different values come into play. But we can't just plug this mix node into the location value there that's gonna offset things on every axis when we just wanna offset on the x-axis. So let me press Shift and A, and from the converter menu here, I'll add in a combine X, Y, Z node. So this is basically just like a blank vector node right now, and we can change values for every axis here. So let's plug the mix node into the X value there, and we'll plug the vector output into the location input of the mapping node. Now it looks like a regular checker texture again, so what happened? Well, take a look at what happens when, when we change the value of these bands. You can see it is actually offsetting each row. So that's perfect, it's actually working. However, it looks like it's offsetting it twice as much as we want it to. So let's simply divide these values by two, and we can do that with a math node. So let me press Shift and A, and from the converter menu, I'll add in a math node, and sneak it over that line right there so that it connects. Let's switch this to divide, and we'll divide those values by two, and there we go. So now it's looking more like a zigzag pattern. We could have probably also divided all of these color values over here by two to achieve the same thing and avoid using another node, but adding that divide node in seems easier. Plus now in the end, we can actually turn this back to one if we want a simpler checker pattern weave instead. So that adds to the customization. All right, so that was all actually the trickiest part. It gets a little bit easier from here. So the next thing we'll do is make these fibers rectangular. So let's go over to this mapping node here and we'll change the X scale to 0.5. And that is perfect. Now the next step is to create a gradient that we can use for a normal map. So it looks like the bands are rounded and bumping out a little. And for that, we'll use a Voronoi texture. So let me press Shift and A. And from the texture menu, I'll add in a Voronoi texture. And we'll just put it right below the checker texture there. Let's move these things aside. We're gonna need some extra space over here. 
Now there are a few ways to create a gradient. There's even a gradient texture. But the Voronoi texture perfectly aligns with the checker texture in terms of scale. Meaning when both textures have the same exact scale value, they're the same exact size and perfectly aligned with each other. So that's why I picked the Voronoi texture, because I know that the gradient we create from this is going to perfectly align with the checker texture that we see in the zigzag pattern here. So we should end up with a perfect gradient in each one of these fibers. So now let's start turning this into a gradient. Let me hold Control, Shift, and left click on that to get a preview of the distance output. Now you might be wondering how we turn this into a gradient, and it's actually pretty easy. First we'll change the dimensions here to 2D instead of 3D. And now we'll turn randomness down to zero, and we'll change the scale value to match the checker texture. So I'll type in 20 there. Now you can see this is perfectly aligned with how the checker texture looked like originally. So when we give it the same mapping coordinates, by plugging that vector output into this vector input, boom. So with the Y scale value here being zero, it stretched the Voronoi pattern vertically, producing vertical bands. In fact, let me cut off the offset right there so we can see those vertical bands. And this is what it looks like without the offset. So just like we were able to stretch checkers into vertical bands, we're able to stretch this as well, but we ended up with gradients instead since it's a different texture. Then when we apply that offset again, we get a perfect base pattern to use for the weave. Now let me zoom in on one of these gradients. We can actually get a somewhat smoother gradient by changing the F1 option here to smooth F1. And if I switch back and forth, you can see the difference. It's slight, but it does give it a slightly more rounded look to it. And all right, we're actually doing pretty good. Now we're done the horizontal bands for the weave, but now we need to create vertical bands, which is gonna be pretty easy because we already have everything made. All right, let me zoom out a bit and let me select that checker texture. I'll press G and move it up and out of the way. And let's center that node a little bit better. And let's go down to the end over here. I'll select the texture coordinate node and I'll move that down there out of the way. Now all these nodes in there are what we're gonna duplicate and create vertical bands with. Now before we duplicate these, let's line these nodes up a little bit better just so it looks a little nicer. So let me select just these nodes right there and I can press shift and the equals key and it lines them all up horizontally. That works with vertical bands as well. For example, if I have vertical bands offset a little bit like that and I select them all, I can press shift and equals and it aligns them nice and neat for me. All right, so now let me select all of those nodes and I'll press shift and D to duplicate and I'll move them straight down to right there. Now we need to reconnect the texture coordinates here. So I'll connect UV from there to the mapping node here. And let me press control and space to full screen this. And I'll connect UV mapping to that mapping node as well. I'll press control and space to get out of full screen. And let's get a preview of this entire bottom chain here. So I'll hold control, shift, and left click on the Voronoi texture there. Now it looks the same so far because we didn't make any changes. So to switch the direction of the bands, we simply just need to switch all of the X and Y values. For example, the X scale is 0.5 and the Y value is zero. So let's just switch X to be zero and Y to be 0.5. And now we need to switch this to go into the Y socket there and disconnect the X. And then finally over here, we need to make the X value one and the Y value zero. And there we go, vertical bands. So now that we have both directions of banding, we can now use this mask up here to combine them together. All right, so now to mix these together, we'll hold control shift and right click on that and drag it up to there it combines them with a mix node. And let's get a preview of this so far. I'll hold control, shift, and left click on it. Right now it's mixing them both 50-50. So we need a mix factor. And that's where the checker texture mask comes into play. So let's connect the color value there to the factor value there. And boom, there we go. There's our weave pattern, sweet. So again, with masks, what's happening is the lighter areas here, or the white areas, are showing the bottom texture, which is the vertical bands, and the black areas are showing the top texture, which are the horizontal bands. So when you mix them together with that mask, you get a perfect weave pattern of gradients. All right, now before we work on the normal map, let's work on the colors for the bands. Now for carbon fiber, it's usually two grayish values, one darker than the other. So let me select this mix RGB node. I'll press shift and D to duplicate it and move it up a little bit. Now let's change color number one here. I'm gonna click on the RGB fields there. I'll change this to 0 0.008 to be our darker gray value. And let's change the bottom color here to be 0 0.03 to be our lighter gray. And now let's preview this. I'll hold control, shift, and left click on that. 
And right now it's just giving us a perfect 50-50 combo of those colors. So we're gonna to need to mix them using a mask and we'll use the checker texture mask we made here. So I'll plug that color value in as the mixing factor and there we go. All right, so this is looking good, but now let's say I wanted to add some shadowing to the weave. For that, we can simply multiply the weave pattern over this. So let me hold control, shift, and I'll right click on that and drag it up to that. And that'll again mix them with a mix node here. And we'll just switch the mixing type here to multiply. And I'll increase the factor up to one there. Now you can see that adds in the weave pattern shadowing on top of our colors for the weave. And we can adjust the shadowing using the slider here too. So that's good for customizing. I wanna leave mine set a little bit lower to 0.85, just for a hint of those shadows. That's looking pretty good. All right, so now I think we're ready to plug this in to the principled node as the base color. So let me connect that color to the base color of the principled node and I'll hold control shift and left click on that to plug that back into the material output. And there we go, let's check it out. It's looking pretty good so far. All right, so now let's work on the normal map which includes the bands bumping out a little as well as a brushed metal effect on them. And we already have the gradients to use for the bands bumping out right here. So let's plug this into a bump node to convert it to a normal map. So let me press Shift and A, and from the vector menu, yeah, we'll add in a bump node. Drop it right there. And for the height value here, we're gonna use this weave pattern. So I'll plug that color value in as the height value. And now let's connect that normal value to the normal value of the principled node. And then I'll hold Control, Shift, and left click on the principled node to plug that back in. All right, so it's doing something, but it's definitely a little extreme right now. So let me turn the strength value down to 0.2, and that's a little bit better but I do feel like it's a little bit too sharp in the middle. There's too sharp of a transition there. It should be more rounded off. And I think this is because there's too much contrast in the height map that we're plugging in. So what we can do is we can decrease the range of the height map by lowering the distance value right here. So let me lower that down to 0.4 and that looks a lot better. That's a lot more rounded off now. And we're actually almost done with this now. We just need to add in that brushed metal effect on the bands and then give it a clear coat layer. We're gonna use noise textures for the brush metal. So let's add one in. Let me zoom out and we'll go over where we're gonna go. Let's go down here. Let me press Shift and A. And from the texture menu, I'll add in a noise texture. And we'll wanna use the same UV coordinates for that as well. So let's connect the UV coordinates from there over there. But I kinda of don't want the lines to be intersecting any more nodes anymore. So what I'll do is press Shift and A. And from the layout menu, I'll add in a reroute node and I'll plug it in right there. Now what we can do is click on UV, drag that to the reroute node to connect it. And now we can connect that reroute node over to the vector socket of the noise texture there. There we go. So that just helps us organize the layout of all the nodes and the connections. And let's add a mapping node for this too to help us out with the scale. So let me press Shift and A. And from the vector menu, yeah, we'll add in a mapping node and drag it over that line until it highlights and then just drop it right there until it connects. Now let's preview the noise. So I'll hold control, shift, and left click on that to preview it. And the noise pattern is way too big. So let's change the scale here up to 10. That's gonna to be too small, but let's just use the mapping node now to really dial this in. So let me start by changing the Y scale up to 30 and that'll squash it. And then we'll change the X scale up to point or down to point two to stretch it out. Now it's almost looking good, but I'm seeing a hint of banding, I guess you could call it. I'm seeing a darker band of noise there, and then a lighter band in the middle, and then a darker one there. It's faint, but I'd rather not have any kind of repeating pattern like that. So let's turn the distortion value for the noise up to five, and that randomizes it enough that you don't notice any detectable pattern. So this is looking like a pretty decent brushed metal effect now. Now, because we have bands going in two directions, we'll need the brushed metal effect in two directions as well. So let me select both of these, and I'm gonna duplicate them and move them down. And let's connect UV coordinates to this mapping node as well. So I'll click on that reroute node, connect it to the vector socket at the top of the mapping node. And let's preview this by holding control, shift, and left clicking on it. Now we can change the direction of the noise again by just swapping X and Y values. So let me type in 30 for the X value and 0.2 for the Y value, and there we go. So now let's mix these two directions together by holding control, shift, right clicking on that and dragging it up to that and it's gonna combine them with a mix node, but right now it's mixing them 50-50. So we're gonna to need to use our original weave pattern mask up here in order to mix the two directions of brushed metal together. So let's click on that color output of that checker texture up there, 
drag it down to the mix factor of our mix node there, and there we go. Perfect. And as you can see, this can also be used for things like making a wooden floor, for example. There's actually quite a few uses for this kind of mask setup. Now, all that's left to do for this is to mix it in with the band gradients. So our band gradients are up here, I think. Yeah, right there. So we're going to mix these two together so that we get a better, more rich normal map out of it with the brushed metal effect. So let me move the bump map over there. I'll select this mix node there, press Shift and D to duplicate it, and drag it over that line so they connect. And now let me connect this color to the bottom socket there. Now let's get a preview of this. I'll hold Control, Shift, and left click on it to preview it. And you can see how it's mixing them together, but I want them to multiply, or I want the bottom to multiply on top of the gradients. So let me switch this to multiply, and let's drag the factor all the way up to one, and you can see how they're combining now. So that's gonna be the new height map that we're converting into a normal map. So let's see how that looks in the end. I'll hold Control, Shift, and left click on the principled node to plug that back in. Though the brushed metal effect is obviously a little extreme, but we can use the factor value here to turn the brushed metal effect up or down. So that's great for customizing. I'm gonna turn mine real low to 0.03, just for a subtle effect. And I think that looks great. Now the texture is almost complete. I just wanna add a polished clear coat layer on top of this. So let's go over to the principled node and I'll turn clear coat up to 0.5. But I also wanna get a better preview of this. It's not looking that great on just a flat plane with this kind of background. So let me first go up into the viewport shading menu here and I'll switch the background to the one with the blue sky and the sun there. I think that looks a little bit cooler. Gives it a little bit of blue too, which looks nice. And the sun reflecting off of the normal map looks really good. All right, now let's get rid of this plane by pressing X and deleting it. And then I'll press Shift and A, and I'll add in a mesh monkey head. We're gonna add the carbon fiber material to this right here. Now I want it to be more high resolution. So to add in a subsurf modifier at level three with a hotkey, you can simply press Control and 3 on the number row. And now let me right click and then choose Shade Smooth for this. And then we'll go up into the Material menu here and give it the Carbon Fiber Material. All right, now obviously the pattern came out a little bit too big on the monkey head. So what I'm going to do now is add in a Master Scale Control that we can use to change the scale of everything in the node tree. So let's go all the way back to the beginning of the node tree here. Now, in order to create that master scale control for everything, we'll add in an initial mapping node next to the UV output right here. So with the texture coordinate node selected, let me press Shift and W for the Node Wrangler menu, and from the Add Reroutes menu here, select Two Linked Outputs. That's gonna create this extra reroute node, but separate the original node away from all of those lines. So now we can add in other nodes in the middle of that. So that's where we're gonna add another mapping node. So let me press Shift and A, and from the vector menu, I'll add in a mapping node and drag it over that line there. So now we can use these scale values down here to control the texture size of every texture that's connected to it. But instead of having to change all three of these values individually, we can use a single value node. So let me press Shift and A, and from the input menu, I'll add in a value node. And now let's connect this to the scale value there. And now this value affects the scale of every texture along the node tree, as you can see. Very cool. Now, after testing it out, I found a scale of 25 for this it is likely a better and more true to life default scale for this texture. But since we scale things down now, we'll need to make some adjustments. Because for example, you can see the normal map is a little extreme again at this scale. So we're gonna need to change that. Now, the first thing we'll do is fix this camera clipping issue over here so we can zoom in a little closer. So let me press the end key for the right side toolbar, go over to the view tab there, now let's change clip start to 0.01. There we go. Now we can zoom in a little bit closer. And let's zoom in on one of these bands here. Now let's go over to the brushed metal mixture here. Is this it? Yeah, this is it. Let me turn that down to zero so we can work with just the bands first. And you can see how the middle of the bands are really sharp again. So let's turn the distance value of the bump node down again. I'll turn it down real low this time to 0.02. And that smooths out that band real nice. And now let's get the brushed metal effect back in there. So let me turn this up to, let's try 0 0.05, about 0 0.04. All right, I think that looks pretty good. All right, and that is, actually, that's it. I think we're done. The ending kind of snuck up on me there. But yeah, we are done our carbon fiber shader. And it is looking pretty darn sweet.
So with this shader, you can customize the scale of the carbon fiber pattern. You can customize the colors, the shadowing, which you can find right here. You can make it a little bit brighter or add some more shadowing to make it darker, a little bit more, uh, a little grungier looking like that, which is pretty cool. You can adjust the, the brushed metal effect, which is cool. You can have none or you can have it extreme. It's very customizable and very cool. And before I also mentioned the possibility of making a regular checker pattern weave as well, and it's quite easy. So let me show you how to do that real fast. So in order to make things square again, instead of rectangular, we can change this scale from 0.5 to one, and we'll change this scale from 0.5 to one as well. And then we just need to change these divide values back to one. And there we go. Now we have a regular square checker pattern but it still has the correct normal maps and the correct direction for the weaves. All right, let me undo that. And yeah, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. So that's actually gonna do it for this step-by-step -step project. This was a lot of fun to make and it used quite a few nodes. So I hope you learned a lot from this and enjoyed it too. And I'll see you in the next lecture.